Ashley Brock reading Nora Roberts' book, Rising Tides, Chapter 9. Inners ruled to have the afternoon off. She loved her job, had both affection and respect for the people she worked with. She believed absolutely in the function and the goals of social work, and she had the satisfaction of knowing she made a difference. She helped people, the young single mother with nowhere to turn, the unwanted child, the displaced elderly person. Inside her burned a deep and bright desire to help them find their way. She knew what it was to be lost, to be desperate, while well, one person who offered a hand, who refused to snatch that hand back, even when it was slapped or snapped at, could change. Because she had been determined to help such a lot nurse, she found Cam, a new life, a new home, new beginnings. Sometimes she thought, rewards came back to you hundredfold everything she'd ever wanted even when she hadn't known she wanted it was tied up in the lovely old house on the water white house with blue trim rockers on the porch flowers in the yard she remembered the first day she'd seen it she traveled along this same road with the radio blaring of course the top had been up then so the wind wouldn't tug her hair free of her pen that had been business call and anna had been determined to be all business the house how charmed her the simplicity of it the stability then she walked around the pretty two-story house by the water and saw an egg Angry, uncooperative, and sexy man repairing the back porch steps. Nothing had been quite the same for her since. Thank God, it was her house now. She thought with a smug grin as she drove fast along the road, flanked by wide, flat fields. Her house in the country, with a garden she imagined. And the angry, uncooperative, sexy man. He was hers, too. And so much more than she'd ever imagined. She drove along that long, straight road with Warren Seven hollering about werewolves in London. This time, she didn't care if the wind tugged at her once tidily pinned hair. She was going home. So the top was down, and her mood was light. She had work to do. The report she needed to complete could be done on her laptop at home, while her red sauce simmered on the stove. She decided they'd have a little greedy to remind Cam of their honeymoon. Not that this particular event seemed to be over, even if they were back on the shore rather than in Rome. She wondered if this wild and wicked passion they had for each other would ever cease and hope not. Laughing at herself, she zipped into the drive and nearly rammed her pretty little convertible into the rear of a dull gray sedan with a rusted bumper. Was her heart had bumped back down into its proper place, she puzzled over it. it. certainly wasn't Cam's car in a car. She doubted he might like to tinker with engines, but he preferred the fast and the sleek body to go around them. This aged and sturdy body looked anything but fast. Philip? She let out a snort. The fastest Philip Crone wouldn't have placed his Italian loafer stood foot on the worn floorboard of such a vehicle. Ethan then she found herself frowning. Pickups and Jeeps were Ethan's style, not compact sedans that had fenders still painted with gray primer. They were being robbed, she thought with a jolt that turned her heartbeat into a jackhammer. In broad daylight, no one ever thought to lock the doors around here. The house was sheltered from its neighbors by trees in the marsh. Someone was inside, picking through their things right now. Eyes narrowed, she slammed out of the car. They weren't getting away with it. It was her house now, damn it, and her things. And if any half-baked burglar thought he could, she trailed off as she looked into the sedan and saw the bright... Saw the big, bright rabbit in the car seat. House burglar with a toddler in tow. Grace, she realized with a sigh, it was one of Grace Monroe's cleaning days. City girl, she tied herself, put the city instincts away. Near another place now, for the moment too early, foolish. Returned to her own car and heaped her briefcase in the bag of fresh produce she'd picked up on the way home. Now she stepped onto the porch, she heard the Montoya's home of the vacuum, underscored by the right twinkle of com commercial TV. Good domestic sounds, Anna thought. She was more than delighted that she wasn't more delighted that she wasn't the one running the vacuum. Grace nearly dropped the wand when Anna came through the door. Oh, well, she flustered. She stepped back, tripping the foot, switched to turn the machine off. I'm sorry, I thought it'd be finished for when I got home. I'm early. Their arms were full Anna crouched in front of the chair where Aubrey sat. Macularly scrambling purple crown on a picture of an elephant in her car room. That's beautiful. It's a plant. <laughs> it's a terrific plant. Prettiest plant I've seen all day. Because Aubrey's nose you seemed to demand it. Anna gave it a quick kiss. I'm nearly done. Nerves danced down to Grace's spine. Anna looked so professional in her business suit that her hair was tumbling out of its pen only made her seem professionally sexy. Grace said, I finished upstairs and in the kitchen. I didn't know. I wasn't sure what you'd like, but I made up a casserole. Scalp potatoes and ham. It's in the freezer. Sounds good. I'm cooking tonight. Anna rose and she got her bag cheerfully. She narrowly stepped out of her shoes but then stopped herself. It didn't seem right to start cluttering things up when Grace was still in the middle of cleaning. She'd wait until later. 
But I won't get off early tomorrow, she continued, so it'll come in handy. Well, I, Grace knew she was a little sweaty, a little grimy, and she felt miserable about class by Anna's crisp blouse and tailored suit, and all those shoes she thought to her best not to make her survey obvious. They were so pretty, so classic, and the leather looked soft enough to sleep on. Toes curled and shit with her frayed white sneakers. The laundry's nearly done, too. There's a load of towels in the dryer. I didn't know where you wanted me to put your things, so I folded everything, left it on the bed in your room. I appreciate it. Catching up after a couple weeks away takes forever. Anna caught herself before she squirmed. She never had a house. Keep her left, but she wasn't quite sure of the proper procedure. I should put these away. You want something cold to drink? Uh, no thanks, no. I should finish up and get out of your way. Curious Anna thought. Curious, Anna saw. Chris had never seemed cool or nervous before, though they didn't know each other well. Anna had felt they were friendly. One way or the other, she decided they had to come to terms. I'd really like to talk to you, if you have the time. Oh. Grace ran her hand up and down. A metal one was vacuum. Ah. Uh, sure. Aubrey, I'm going in the kitchen with Mrs. Quinn. Me too. Aubrey scrambled up and raced ahead. By the time her mother got her, she was brought on the floor, intently creating a purple giraffe. That's her collar this week, Grace commented. Automatically, she went to the refrigerator, took out the picture of illumination made. She tends to settle on one until she wears the crown down to an up, and then she picks another. Her hand froze on the glass she'd been about to take from her. I'm sorry, since the, I was thinking, and it's her bang out. About what? Making myself at home in your kitchen. Aha, Anna thought. There was the problem. Two women, one house. They were both a little uneasy about the situation. Took a plump tomato from the bag, examined it, and set it on the counter. Next year, she was going to try to grow her own. You know what I like about this house from the first time I stepped into the kitchen? It's the kind of place where it's easy to make yourself at home. I wouldn't want that to change. She continued to unload her bag, setting carefully chosen vegetables on the counter. Grace had to bite her tongue to keep from mentioning that Ethan didn't care for mushrooms. When Anna set a bag of them beside the peppers, it's your home now, Grace said slowly. You'll want to tend it your own way. That's true, and I am thinking of making some changes. Would you mind pouring that lemonade? It looks wonderful. Here comes Grace. Thought changes. She poured two glasses and took the plastic cup from the counter. Spill from it. Here, honey. Now don't spill. Aren't you going to ask me what changes? Anna wondered. It's not my place. When did we get to have places? Anna demanded with just enough annoyance to put Grace back up. I work for you for the time being, anyway. If you're about to tell me you're quitting, you're really going to spoil my day. I don't care how much progress women have made. If I'm alone in this house with four men, I'll end up doing 90% per of the housework. Maybe not at first. She continued to pace now. Well, that's just how it'll end up. It won't matter that I have a full-time job on top of it either. Cam hates housework. He'll do anything he can to get out of it. Ethan's neat enough, but he has a habit of making himself scarce. Says, well, he's dead. So that says it all. Philip only lives here on weekends, and he'll make the arrangement, the argument, that he didn't make the mess in the first place. So roll back. Oh, are you telling me you're quitting? It was the first time Grace had seen Anna on her full steam. She was both impressed and baffled. I thought you said you were going to make some changes and you were going to let me go. <clears throat> I'm thinking about getting some new pillows and having the sofa recovered. And I said patiently, not lose to the person I already realized I'm going to depend on for my sanity around here. Do you think I didn't know who made sure I didn't come home to a house full of dishes and laundry and dust? Do, you, do I look like an idiot to you? <laughs> no, I am getting a smile flirted at Grace's mouth. I work my tail off, so do you notice. Okay, you're a little rough. Why don't we sit down and start over? <laughs> that would be good. I'm sorry. For, for all the nasty things I let myself think about you over the last few days, she smiled fully as she sat down. I forgot how much I liked you. I'm outnumbered around here, Grace. I could sure use another woman. I don't know exactly how these things are done, since I'm the outsider here. You're not an outsider. Grace will bug in and shop. You're Cam's wife, and you've been a part of his life, all of their lives, a great deal longer. Stirred hands, palmed up, smiled. Let's get this one thing out of the way so we can forget it. Whatever you've been doing around here works just fine for me. Appreciate knowing you're doing it so I can concentrate on my marriage, on Seth, and on my job. Are we clear there? <laughs> yeah. And since my instincts tell me you're a kind, understanding person, I'm going to confess that I need you a lot more than you need me. Throw myself on your mercy. <laughs> a quick, easy laugh made shallow dimples flicker in Grace's cheeks. <laughs> I don't think there's anything you couldn't do. 
maybe not, but I swear to God, I don't want to be Wonder Woman. Don't leave me alone with all these men. <laughs> Grace nibbled on her lower lip for a minute. If you're going to have the living room sofa redone, you'll need new curtains. I was thinking, Priscilla's yes. They beamed at each other perfectly court. Mama, gotta pee. Oh, Grace sprang up and scooped a frantic dancing Aubrey into her arms. We'll be right back. Anna had a good chuckle. Then Rose stripped off her jacket and prepared to start her sauce. This kind of cooking, this familiarity, the dependable relaxed her. Since she had no doubt that it would earn her points with the Quinn men, when they got home, she intended to join joy herself. Pleased her as well that she exhibited a basis of friendship with Grace. She wanted that benefit of small towns and country living, the neighbors. One of the reasons she'd been restless during her time in D.C. was the lack of a connection with people who lived and worked around her. When she moved to Princess Anne, she found something of the old neighborhood ease she'd grown up with in her grandparents' well-established section of Pittsburgh. And now, she thought, she had the opportunity to become good friends with a woman she admired and believed she would enjoy. When Grace and Aubrey came back into the room, she smiled. You hear stories about toilet training being a nightmare from everyone involved. There are hits and misses. Grace gave Aubrey... There are hits and misses. Grace gave Aubrey a quick squeeze before setting it out. Aubrey's such a good girl. Aren't you, sweetie? I didn't wet my pants. I gave nickel for the piggy bank. When I roared with laughter, Grace Smith's kid naturally in bribery works. I'm all for it. I should finish up. Are you in a hurry? Not really. Cautious Grace Clint's at the kitchen clock. <laughs> my hair just went easy. Shouldn't be back for at least an hour. Maybe you could keep me company while I put this sauce together. I suppose I could. It had been she couldn't remember how long it had been since she'd just sat in the kitchen with another woman. The similar simplicity of it nearly made her sad. There's a show that Aubrey likes to watch that's just coming on. Is it alright if I settle her down with it? I can do the rest of the vacuum when it's over. Great! Anna slid her tomato in the pot to let them simmer soften. I've never made spaghetti sauce from scratch, Grace said when she came back in. I mean, all the way from fresh tomatoes. Takes more time, but it's worth it. Grace, hope you don't mind, but I heard what happened the other night at the bar where you work. Surprise made Grace blink. Forget to memorize the ingredients in it set out. Ethan told you? <laughs> no. No. You have to pull on Ethan's tongue to get him to tell anything. Anna wiped her hands on the bit of apron she put on. I don't want to pry, but I have some experience with sexual assault. I want you to know you can talk to me if you need to. It wasn't as bad as it could have been. If Ethan hadn't been there, she trailed off, discovering that thinking about it still made her cold inside. Well, he was. I should have been more careful. And had a quick flash of dark road, the bottom gravel against her back as she shoved her. It's a mistake to blame yourself. Oh, I don't. Not that way. I didn't deserve what he tried to do. I didn't encourage him. The fact is, I made it clear I wasn't interested in him or his hotel bed, but I should have locked up after Steve left. I wasn't thinking, and that was careless. I'm glad you weren't hurt. I could have been. I can't afford to be careless. She glanced at the doorway where the bright music and Aubrey's bright laughter came from. I've got too much at stake. Single parenting's hard. I see the problems that can come out of it all the time. You're brilliant at it. No, it wasn't surprised, but shocked. No one had ever called her brilliant at it. I just do. Yes, and said, my mother died when I was 12, but before that, she was a single parent. When I look back and remember, I see that she was brilliant at it too. She just did. I hope I'm half as good as just doing as both of you when I have a child. Are you can planning on it? I'm good at planning. Anderson was left. I want to get, I want to give just between I want to just give, be married a little time, but yes, I want children. She looked out the window where the flowers she was playing, playing with women. This is a wonderful place to raise kids. You knew Ray and Stella Quinn? Oh, yes. They were wonderful people. I still miss them. I wish I'd known them. They'd have liked you. Do you think they'd have liked you for yourself? Grace told her. And they'd have loved what you'd done for the family. You helped bring them back together. I think they got a little lost for a while, after Dr. Quinn died. Maybe they only had to go their own way, just like they had to come back. Ethan stayed. He's rooted here, in the water, like ill grass. But he drifted to and spent too much time alone. His house is around the bend that the river takes away from the waterfront. I've never seen it. It's tucked away, Grace murmured. He likes his privacy. Sometimes on a quiet night, if I went walking when I was carrying Aubrey, I could hear him play his music. Just catch the notes on the air. If the wind was right, it sounded lonely, lovely, and lonely. 
I just thought we're dating by love. So some things with perfect clarity. How long have you been in love with him? Seems like all my life. Grace remember the cars. I didn't mean to say that. Too late. You haven't told him? No. But even the thought of it, Grace's heart clenched in panic. I shouldn't be talking about this. He'd hate it. He's, it embarrassed him. Well, he's not here, is he? Amazed and delighted, Anna Bean. I think it's terrific. It's not. It's awful. It's just awful. Horrified, she pressed the hand to her mouth. Well, back son and I see I ruined it. Ruined everything. And now he doesn't even want me to be around me. Oh, Grace. Flooded with sympathy, Anna abandoned her chop and wrapped her arm side around Grace's stiff form. And I nudged her towards her. I can't believe that. It's true. He told me to stay away. Her voice is mortified. I'm sorry. I don't know what's got into me. I never cry. Then it's time you broke tradition. Anna tore off a couple of sheets of paper towels and offered. Go ahead. You'll feel better. I feel stupid. But the damn broken gray sobbed in the paper towels. There's nothing to feel stupid about. There is. There is. Better so we can't even be friends anymore. How did you do that? Anna asked Julie. I was pushing myself at him. I guess it's thought after night he kissed me. He kissed you? Anna repeated it. Really began to feel better. He was mad. Grace pressed her face to the towel, breathing deep until she could regain some control. It was after what happened at the pub. I never seen him like that. I've known him most of my life, but never knew he could be like that. I'd have been scared if I hadn't known him. The way he tossed that man aside, like he was a bag of feathers. <laughs> he had this look in his eyes that made them hard and different. And she sighed. Admitted the worst. Exciting. Oh, it was horrible to think that. Are you kidding? Hannah reached over and squeezed her hand. I wasn't even there, and I'm excited. With a watery laugh, Grace mopped at her face. I don't know what came over me. But he was yelling at me, got my back up, and we had a fight when he took me home. He was saying that I should have quit my job and talking to me like I lost every word. Keep brains out in my head. <laughs> Typical male reaction. That's right. <laughs> Roughly angry all over again. Grace nodded. It was just typical, and I never would have expected that from him. Then we were rolling around on the grass. You were absolutely not as light as Anna Grand. He was kissing me, and I was kissing him back, and it was wonderful. All my life I'd wondered how it would be. Then there it was, and it was better than anything I'd ever mentioned, and he stopped and said he was sorry. And I closed her eyes. Oh, Ethan, you idiot. He told me to go inside. Just before I did, he said he thought about me, that he didn't want to, but he did. So I hoped that things would start to change. <clears throat> I'd say they changed already. Yes, but not the way I'd hoped. The day you and Cam came back, I was here when he got home. And it seemed like maybe, but he took me back to my house. He told me he thought it through, and he wasn't going to touch me again. And I was to steer clear of him for a while. She let out a long breath. So I am. And I waited a minute. That's your great. Oh, Grace, you idiot. When Grace Brown and I leaned across the table. Obviously, the man wants you, and it scares the hell out of him. You have the power here. Why aren't you using it? The power? What power? The power to get what you want if what you want is Ethan Quinn. You just need to get him alone and seduce him. Grace snorted. Seduce him? Me seduce Ethan? I couldn't do that. Why couldn't you? Because I... There had to be simple and logical reasons. I don't know. I don't think I'd be good at it. I bet you'd be great at it. And I'm going to help you. You are? Absolutely. Anna rose to fuss with her sauce and to think. When's your next night off? <clears throat> Tomorrow? Good, that's just enough time. I'll keep Abby for you overnight, but that might make it too obvious. And we'd better be settled if there's someone you can trust with her. My mother's been wanting to take her overnight, but I couldn't. Perfect. You might feel inhibited with the baby in the house. I'll figure out how to get him over there. She turned around, studied Drew's cool, classic look, she mused, big sad eyes. The man was already a goner. <clears throat> you want to wear something simple but feminine, considering she tapped a fingertip against her teeth. Pastels would be best, a fragile color, soft green or pink. Because her head was staring, darn his fingers would have been, uh, you're going too fast. <clears throat> so while somebody has to, this rate you and Ethan will be, still be circling on each other when you're 60. No jewelry, <laughs> she added. Just the bare minimum of makeup. Wear your usual scent too. He used to it. It'll say something to him. Anna, it doesn't matter what I wear if he doesn't want to be there. Of course it matters. As a woman who had long-term love affairs with clothes, she was very nearly shocked at the suggestion. 
Men don't think they notice what a woman wears unless it's next to nothing, but they do subconsciously, and it helps click the mood or the image. Let's purge, she added. Fresh basil with sauce. Got out of scales for sautéed onions. Gonna. I'm gonna try to get him over there close to sunset. You should light some candles, put on music. The Quins like their music. What should I say to him? I can only take you so far, Grace. <laughs> Anna said, darling, and I'm better. I'm betting you'll figure it out when the time comes. She was far from convinced of that. <laughs> well, new sense began. The romance, the air age, Grace worried her lip. Feels like I'd be tricking him. And your point would be? <laughs> Grace, chuckled. Tr Grace chuckled and gave up. I have a pink dress. I bought it for Steve's wedding a couple years ago. Anna glanced over her How does it look on you? Well, Grace slips closer. Steve's best man had on me before they cut the cake. Sounds like a deal. I still don't. Grace stopped as her mother's ear cut the twinkle of music from the living room. That's the end of Bob Free Show. I have to finish up in the air. She rose quickly, panicked at the thought of Ethan coming home before she was gone. She really knows she felt much. Much on her face. Anna, I appreciate what you're trying to do, but I just don't think it's going to work. Ethan knows his own mind. Then it won't hurt him to come around to your house and see you in a pink dress, will it? Grace blew out of breath. This can't ever win an argument with you <laughs> on the rare occasion, but never when I'm at my best. Grace edged toward the door, knowing that Aubrey's sit and be sit and behave time was nearly up. I'm glad you come home early today. Anna tapped her wooden spoon on the lip of her pot. Me too. End of chapter nine. <laughs>